Hello everyone. My name is Ela Tripathi. I have secured rank 51 in civil services examination 2016 and uh, my optional was sociology. This is basically a small introductory video where I'll be talking about how the pattern over the time has changed and brought optional uh, on the, you know, center stage of the whole examination scheme. Then what optionals uh, to choose when you are aiming for a good score or a good double digit rank and and lastly i'll be talking about why i have made this video so uh, to begin with in the current scheme of things optional holds around 500 marks of weightage in the mains examination gs is about a thousand marks okay so here it might seem that optional is relatively less important but let me tell you from my own personal experience I got a 301 in socio paper 1 and paper 2 and I got a 427 so you can see that the marks in terms of percentage that one scores it is really very high when it comes to optional so you know you might argue that I might be a case in point but let me tell you in GS given that we cover a myriad of things and there are very broad topics one is dealing with. There are paper 1 to 4, 250 marks each, boiling down to 1000 marks. But in this case, even if you put your best foot forward, you can you know, get a maximum of let's say 15 plus minus 15. The highest can go as, as much as let's say 400 40 or something on that side but in case of optional you can score as high as you know even 350 out of a 500 that's like straight 49 marks or 50 marks jump and mind you a 50 marks leap in the UPSC exam is like a deal breaker or deal maker if I just hypothetically just reduce my marks to let's say 280 21 marks slashed altogether that would bring me down from AIR 51 to out of 100 such narrow is the competition going out of 100 means no IAS or whatever the first preference you might fill generally it is IAS so you see small marks difference really create a sea of change in where your name features on the list what services you get the card or allocation and so on this hence brings us to the point that why optional in the current pattern of examination is very important now having discussed about the the figures and the facts let us seek an optional which provides us a way out where we can get the maximum return on the time that we invest in that respect sociology fits the bill so when we are talking about let's say GS paper 1 where we talk of socio-economic conditions there are questions like how does globalization impact the current Indian women how has the crimes of women crimes against women changed with the surge in technology so these are questions which feature every year and uh, that that's basically a core of GS1 they also form a very important part of paper to syllabus of sociology apart from GS1 sociology as an optional also helps you in GS3 where you're dealing with environmental ethics you're dealing with the economics and its impact on people uh, to give you an example in 2016 there was a question on financial inclusion so financial inclusion and its impact on society the digitization involved it is a topic which is very important when you're dealing with sociology particularly social mobility stratification at all so sociology definitely is one optional wherein you can get maximum return in the same time that you would invest in any other optional apart from GS1 and GS3 sociology also would prove handy in uh, 
essay writing because in essay writing I, I scored 147 in my essay papers and this I can largely attribute to my optional sociology. I was easily able to trifurcate each issue in a socio-economic and political aspect. Perhaps this is what the examiner is looking for. You are able to think in a more organized way and not to forget it covers considerable part of your GS. Also in paper 2 there is a considerable overlap with current affairs when we are dealing with topics like caste movements, social movements, the social changes that have taken place in India in the recent past, industrialization, urbanization, we happen to come across many current issues, the socio-economic issues. So in a way you are really, very well prepared with almost everything ranging from GS1 to GS3. Your arsenal is ready with case studies, data, facts and you know some of the prominent thinkers. However here you should exercise caution that you do not sound like a specialist because it's a general studies paper but then at the same time you can get really good marks if you quote appropriate case studies at the appropriate place. And one of the uh, you know, benefits that I personally feel is it's a Sada Bahar or an evergreen optional. So um, this is, this is uh, a term I borrowed from a friend. So in terms of Sada Bahar, I mean that let us say if you had asked about the current socio-economic condition of women in a nuclear family. Even if you do not quote G.P. Murdoch, even if you do not quote, let's say, you know, Andrew Gibbons, if you do not quote any of the thinker or their literary works, you will still be able to write something from your common understanding. So sociology, because of its overlap with common sense, happens to save you from the risk of binary marking. By binary marking I mean, let us say, in maths, if you solve a question correctly, you are bound to get full marks. But let us say somewhere in the steps, you know, 2 multiplied by 3 becomes 5. In that case, you run the risk of all, all, your final answer being wrong and you ending up with a zero. So it's either a zero or a full mark. Whereas in sociology, even if you do not quote thinkers for any of your answers, you do not make yourself vulnerable to a zero mark or negative mark at all. So that is why I believe sociology is an evergreen optional. Now, that brings us to an important question. If sociology is so easy, why doesn't everyone score a 300 or so? The problem is the various topics are not put up in one place. The, where the syllabus is vast, not, not in the sense that its, its content is huge, it's just that it is spread across multiple books. I myself had to read at least three, four apart from the regular EPW, etc. I, I read Herlumbus, I read Rama Huja, I read Ignu BAMA notes and, and it was a good time taking exercise but nevertheless I, I feel rewarded for all the hard work I put in. So here I believe that the problem, the solution lies in consolidating the material and that brings me to answer the question that why I'm making this video. So I in association with the Brainy IES Academy have designed and compiled a series of video lectures which will encompass paper 1 and paper 2 syllabus of sociology and it will be some 27-30 lecture series. Each lecture would comprehensively deal with the topics which are mentioned in the UPSC syllabus. I would also make reference to the previous year question papers that have featured from that topic. There would also be handouts to the uh, after the lecture and also references in case you are interested in reading more. The video lecture series would be around um, I would say 40-45 minute lectures spanning across some 27 odd lectures. At the end of the lecture series I would also be talking about what are the various I would say hacks when you are doing an answer writing for sociology paper. So uh, stay tuned and hope you like this initiative by me and uh, the Brainy IES Academy. Thank you for watching the video.